Uh, so it's been a while uh, since uh, we spoke on the Nikhil Chance portfolio. So it feels good to connect again. Uh, so let me share the uh, presentation. So as usual, I will just uh, uh, share some perspective on the portfolio, portfolio performance uh, for the 15-20 minutes and then uh, we can get into questions and uh, questions. Uh, so starting as usual, uh, uh, we will start with the fundamental slides. Uh, so this uh, depicts the long-term fundamental performance of the Natal Champs portfolio company. Uh, so again, uh, uh, this long-term fundamental performance is the single most uh, important reason uh, you know, why we have such high conviction in the portfolio. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, this fundamental performance has not only been healthy over the long period of time, but they have also been very consistent over the next, last uh, three, five, ten years uh, uh, time period. And hence, uh, if the fundamentals are, uh, uh, are robust, we think that eventually that should also reflect in the share price performance and the returns for the portfolio as a whole. And uh, again, to reiterate that one key difference between the Needle Champs uh, uh, portfolio fundamentals versus a typical conventional small cap uh, portfolio fundamental is that uh, small caps fundamental, you will see a lot of volatility. Obviously, there is no escaping quarterly volatility, even uh, Needle Champs, as we discuss uh, uh, in the uh, few, next few slides, there has been some volatility in the quarterly performance of the last two to three quarters. But when we look from a three-year, five-year, ten-year perspective, the fundamentals have been robust. Whereas in a conventional small caps, you will find a lot of volatility. There will be two periods of exceptional uh, growth in the earnings. Then there will be two years of no growth. And then uh, wouldn't be surprised if there are two years of uh, very, very disappointing performance that profits actually turns into losses. So in a way, actually, that differentiates uh, Natal Champ's uh, portfolio from the conventional small caps. And hence, uh, we believe that uh, the uh, that should also reflect in the uh, return performance. Uh, just to give an example, for example, BSC small caps has, has been having a very roaring performance over the last two years. We saw them, uh, saw the index having a very roaring performance even in uh, calendar years 16 and 17. But uh, I think many of you will remember that uh, the index saw a very sharp drawdown in the subsequent calendar years. Uh, uh, cal I think uh, I remember still remember the date uh, mid-January, I think, where the BSE small cap peaked. And then for next two years, till the COVID first wave, uh, we had a very sharp fall in the BSE small caps. Uh, so we don't expect that kind of uh, volatility in the Natal Jams uh, portfolios. Obviously, there will be periods of uh, uh, the periods of uh, uh, drawdowns, but it will be not as sharp as what we see in typical small caps or the BSE index. Uh, so in that context, uh, 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 moving forward, uh, uh, Natal Champs portfolio, it has been uh, Natal over four years uh, since we launched uh, Natal Champs. Um, it was launched on 29th August uh, 2019. Uh, so if you see, this slide is divided into two parts. So for a best part of the portfolio, uh, three years, uh, the portfolio did very well. Uh, we were actually compounding at uh, more than 31% CAGR uh, CAGR uh, till September 2022. Having said that, in the last 12 months, uh, the performance has been disappointing. We will get into the details of that. Uh, uh, so we are down 15% since September 2022, uh, whereas uh, the BSE 500 is up 12%. And BSE small cap, I think many of you have question. BSE small cap actually has a roaring performance in the last 12 months. It is up close to 25%. Uh, so we'll get into the details of what has impacted the portfolio performance. Uh, but just to uh, heads up that we think, you know, this uh, performance is uh, kind of an aberration. We are very confident that uh, the fundamentals of the companies uh, will come back very strongly. And so the share price performance uh, will come back uh, very, very uh, sharply. Uh, now, uh, again, just to uh, take it stockwise, you'll find that the right-hand side table is the three-year period. You'll find that most of the stocks have done very, very well, uh, close to 20% uh, uh, return performance on a three-year period. But when you look from a one-year return perspective on the left-hand side, you'll find that many of the stocks are in red. Uh, so again, uh, just to uh, uh, reiterate uh, that if you have a longer-term invest investment horizon, uh, three years, five years, uh, we think that the portfolio should not only be able to overcome the near-term uh, weaknesses, but it should also be able to generate healthy returns. Uh, uh, and uh, coming to the uh, uh, fundamental performance in the near term, uh, the portfolio earnings were compounding uh, uh, as they were historically uh, north of 20% till the third quarter of uh, uh, FY23. 
it is in the last two uh, since a uh, fourth quarter 23 is uh, where we are seeing some moderation in the earnings growth so as you can see in the table uh, so from more than 20% earnings growth the portfolio earnings has uh, uh, come down to single digit uh, single digit uh, earnings growth uh, and the key reason uh, 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 we'll get into that uh, the key reason if i have to summarize is uh, there are four reasons uh, uh, one is that a set of portfolio companies, uh, they had very high base to contend with uh, in the set, starting from FY23. Uh, these are the set of companies which uh, benefited immensely during COVID period, uh, likes of Alkyl Amines, uh, Tarsons, and Metropolis. Uh, these companies uh, had additional stream of revenues. Uh, for example, Alkyl Amines, uh, one product called Acetonitrile, it had a very roaring uh, uh, success during COVID. Uh, it, find, it found application in the COVID-related drugs. Plus also during COVID, uh, China, uh, as a supplier of uh, some of the uh, base chemicals, it uh, uh, had issues around lockdowns. Uh, there was a logistical issues. As a result, uh, uh, players like Alkyl Amines, they benefited from not only volume uh, increase, but also realization. Uh, of uh, realization increase. For example, acetonitrile pre-COVID used to trade somewhere around 160 to 200 rupees per kg. During COVID period, uh, that realization per kg went up uh, north of 300 rupees. And that was all uh, accretion to the bottom line because there was no increase in the cost per se. But as things normalized uh, since the last 12 months, 18 months, uh, acetonitrile prices have uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, normalized and so do the volumes have normalized. Uh, so this is one reason, for example, high uh, base to contend with, especially the COVID years, FY21 and first half of FY22. Uh, as a result, optically, the earnings uh, looks weak. Uh, similarly, is the case for Tarsons. Uh, so Tarsons supplies uh, lab uh, consumables like uh, beakers, uh, like uh, tubes, etc. And again, because of the elevated testing uh, during COVID time, uh, many of these products uh, uh, did very well during COVID. And as uh, COVID uh, went off, uh, this uh, demand for... This this additional demand actually uh, came down. Uh, similarly, is the case of uh, Metropolis. Even though Metropolis actually we bought it uh, uh, post COVID, so from a share price perspective, we are not really got. In fact, we are done very well. Uh, we bought it at one of the lowest prices around a few months back post COVID. But uh, when you look at Metropolis uh, earnings for the last uh, three four quarters, again the same story. Uh, it benefited from uh, ad PCR testing additional revenues during COVID, and that revenue has tapered down uh, completely. Uh, in the last few quarters. So this is one set of uh, 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 challenges uh, which optically has impacted the revenues of uh, some of the portfolio companies. And second uh, impact, uh, again, similar, but not related to COVID, COVID as such. Uh, for example, fine organics, uh, it, uh, product uh, never find, uh, doesn't find application in COVID-related drugs. But what happened is that fine's uh, main competitor, uh, main revenues come from the export markets. Nearly 60, 65% of its uh, revenues come from the export markets. Uh, in the developed uh, countries. And uh, uh, last year, uh, 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 there was a huge uh, logistical challenges. Uh, freight rates were very high, container shortages. As a result, fine being closer to the raw material sources, to the Far East countries, they could, they could procure the supply uh, of the raw material, whereas their competitors who were far off in the Western world simply couldn't uh, lay their hands on the raw materials like palm oil and so on. As a result of uh, fine organics uh, again benefited uh, because it was able to uh, supply to the customers in the uh, uh, western world whereas its competitors regional computers couldn't and hence its uh, volumes as well as realization uh, it uh, increased significantly uh, starting from second half of fy22 and all the way continuing first half of fy23 uh, again that uh, as the world has opened up uh, as uh, container woos have uh, uh, ebbed off uh, we are seeing the volumes and realization uh, uh, dropping for, for fine uh, compared to the elevated levels we saw uh, previously. Uh, prudent again, uh, prudent uh, again, nothing wrong in the uh, company as such, but uh, uh, why the second quarter earnings uh, has been impacted is because uh, one is uh, SEBI disallowed the additional commissions which were Hitarto paid to uh, the distributors uh, for selling products in uh, mutual fund products in uh, B30, which is uh, uh, beyond the top 30 cities. So Seb uh, SEBI was earlier incentivizing uh, through additional commissioning uh, commissions to help penetration of the mutual fund products. Uh, uh, 
uh, in the uh, in the smaller cities and towns but uh, that has been discontinued uh, since the last two quarters and hence uh, second quarter we didn't have that revenue from the b30 uh, beyond b30 cities and secondly uh, some of you may remember that uh, in budget there was one important announcement that um, uh, premiums uh, life insurance premium above 5 lakh would be taxable and hence we saw a lot of affronting of this uh, premium uh, uh, or the policy uh, during fourth quarter uh, and hence a uh, 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 lot of affronting already happened in fourth quarter and hence we saw the especially the high ticket non par uh, insurance policies drying up in the first two quarters and hence uh, so there is no structural issue in the company such it, we are facing these two kind of uh, one off issues so as we head into fy25 we think that uh, uh, things should normalize for prudent and third reason is that there is a genuine uh, demand weakness uh, for some of the portfolio companies for example poshak uh, uh, a major uh, application for uh, poshak's phosgene as well as phosgene derivatives is agrochemicals and agrochemicals is uh, seeing a bit of a, a bottom cycle for the last uh, 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 few quarters now uh, so there is a uh, demand issue in case of poshak and similarly in case of galaxy while india is uh, firing very well for them Uh, but they are facing challenges especially in uh, the middle east uh, africa middle east region uh, so egypt is a important country for them uh, because of the politics and because of the currency depreciation uh, and also uh, 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 during covid many of these uh, western uh, customers because of the logistical issues again uh, uh, they bulled up on the uh, inventory on the personal care uh, products during covid and uh, we are seeing a bit of destocking uh, in the last last few quarters uh so here there is a couple of uh, companies there is de- uh, genuinely demand issues uh, the fourth is uh, where there is definitely structural issues uh, we think in the portfolio companies so one is vmart we have been discussing this stocks uh, with you for a while now so vmart may uh, uh, it caters to the mass uh, segment of the population who have really got impacted in the last 3 years first because of the covid related issues like job losses and uh, uh, another reason is the increasing inflation which has really pinched uh, their spending power and hence apparel is something you know which comes lower down the priority for them uh so there has been a and uh, vmart's primary customer is this uh, mass segment uh so there is a definite uh, impact on vmart uh and also uh, we have seen increasing competition from likes of zudio uh, so for example uh, we have recently actually bought metro uh, uh we uh, bought a metro and trent in our uh, rising giants portfolio during the course of doing research on these companies uh, we found that uh, zudio uh, has been able to penetrate uh, much deeper uh, than what we thought we thought that zudio likes of zudio will be more uh, towards the cities uh, but to our surprise uh, they have been able to even penetrated deeper into tier 2 3 or 4 cities so definitely uh, vmart uh, even though uh, core of vmart is something like 200 250 rupees apparel but uh, there is definite impact on the uh, say 15 20% of its apparels which are priced uh, around 400 500 rupees so definitely uh, likes of zudio are uh, capturing market share for them so vmart may we definitely have uh, uh, seeing some structural issues so as a response to that uh, we have uh, again you would have seen in your portfolio we have trimmed the position in vmart it used to be around 8 9% of our portfolio allocation over the course of last uh, uh two three months we have bought it down to uh, uh less than 4% now uh, we still have that in the portfolio primarily because one is a, the price has corrected significantly uh, so we don't want to kind of uh, already the price is corrected and secondly uh, uh we are we'll be evaluating how the festival season goes for vmart so vmart has made some important changes uh, in their apparels in their designs uh, in their uh, organizational structure over the course of last 12 months so this festival season will be very key for uh, vmart so we will be doing channel checks etc we will be seeing but having said that we have cut down the position we are maintaining a 3 to 4% position in vmart uh, uh, as of now but we will be keeping a close eye on how the festival season goes for vmart and lastly avas again we have discussed this so avas the key unfortunate reason is that uh, abrupt uh, exit of founder uh, sushil agarwal definitely there will be some reset in the businesses uh, uh, that will be reset uh, fortunately there has been no attrition at the senior management level so one worry we had that uh, there will be attrition at the senior management level 
uh, that has not been the case uh, but uh, uh, there will be definitely some impact uh, uh, in the organization because Sushil Agarwal is the person who uh, founded uh, Awas who built Awas and so on so there will be definitely impact again as a response to Mr. Agarwal's exit we cut down we trimmed the position in Awas it used to be around 7-8% of the portfolio we brought it down to 4% uh, again, here, uh, this is something which we are uh, keeping a close tap uh, on how the company, how the things develop over here. So, uh, uh, barring VMAT and AWAS, uh, we don't see any structural issues uh, in any of the portfolio companies. So, as a result, uh, despite near-term weaknesses, uh, we continue to uh, maintain sizable uh, position in most of the portfolio companies. Uh, and uh, why we are confident is that things should reverse is that uh, uh, one is... Uh, uh, when we look uh, for the export-oriented portfolio companies, uh, as I said, like there has been weaknesses in the demand in the last few quarters, but there is, uh, uh, fortunately, most of these portfolio companies, they cater to resilient end-user industries. Mm -hmm. So whether we talk about the like of Garware, GMM, Tarsons, so these are not cyclical, cyclical companies. Mm -hmm. uh, these caters to food industry, FMCG, pharma, uh, where the demand should come back. Uh, we don't see the demand uh, remaining weak for elevated a long period of time. Uh, so we are uh, very confident that uh, given the nature of this uh, end user industries for these companies, uh, the demand should uh, normalize. In fact, in the recent uh, months, we are seeing uh, uh, the things stabilizing. So which were going one way down uh, till uh, say May, June, we are seeing things uh, demand. When you look at the export data, we are seeing that things are uh, bottoming out. And we are very hopeful and very confident that things should start seeing an upturn uh, for these companies. Uh, and second reason is that uh, barring VMAT and uh, Avas, which I talked about, uh, most of the companies we see there is no structural issue. For example, if you ask me, is there a market share loss for our portfolio companies? The answer is a resounding no. So there has been no market share loss for the portfolio companies. In fact, uh, we believe that uh, they have gained market share. Uh, their peers would have actually uh, fared uh, poorer uh, than these came companies. Uh, just for a couple of examples, so look at uh, Balaji versus Alkail in the last two, three quarters. Alkail's uh, revenue growth, uh, profit growth has been much better than Balaji. Uh, in fact, uh, because of this slowdown, uh, um, um, pre uh, previously some of the competitors were actually, because these companies did very well during COVID, many of these uh, new companies were trying to get uh, into their industry or many of the existing peers had announced a capacity expansion. Because of the slowdown, uh, many of these uh, expansion have now been put on the back burner. Uh, whereas our portfolio companies have went ahead and invested. For example, Alkaila Mines, uh, it recently commissioned Ithala Mines, uh, its uh, second plant in Kurukum, Pune. Uh, so whereas the competitors have actually uh, developed cold feet, uh, our portfolio companies, in fact, have doubled down on their investment uh, during slowdown. And again, as we have said uh, previously, a sign of a good management is how do they behave and react uh, during uh, uh, slow down. Uh, so th if they remain confident in the business, if they uh, continue to invest in the business, when things normalize, uh, they will be uh, able to benefit immensely. Uh, so that again, uh, the kind of reinvestment that these companies have made in the last two years, that uh, as you can see in the right hand side table, that has been nearly twice than what it is to be pre-COVID. Uh, so that again gives us a lot of confidence uh, that these companies um, continue to fo be focused on the businesses, continue to look at the business from a long term rather than taking short term and continue to remain and um, highly convinced and uh, display a high degree of conviction on their business. So that also gives us a, a lot of a lot of uh, confidence. And uh, uh, negative returns, as I said, like it's uh, because these companies are in the business, there will be years of negative returns, right? So uh, it will not... Uh, can't be expected that all the years these companies will have positive returns. In the history also, for example, what we have done is that for the four most uh, like uh, oldest company in the portfolios, we have seen that history. When you look at the histogram for uh, for uh, for these companies, for example, Alkali Mines, it had periods of uh, negative returns, negative share price returns in the past. But good thing is that uh, positive uh, years of positive returns, they clearly outnumber the years of negative returns. And second positive thing is that uh, after every one or two years of negative returns, it has followed by the years of very strong returns. For example, FI 2000 and 2001, one of the weakest years for uh, the Indian stock market. Alkyl also actually 
uh, suffered during that year but uh, we saw that uh, next uh, two years in fact it continued for a while uh, it posted very strong recovery in the share price uh, returns so not only it uh, recouped the losses but it went on to deliver significant positive returns uh, even after covering the losses of the earlier years uh, similarly other instances also when weak years have followed by followed by uh, followed by uh, strong positive returns uh, in fact uh, one interesting thing is that you'll find that the years of uh, sharp drawdowns are very low <clears throat> compared to the years of strong returns in the share price and similarly the story of uh, gm folder in fact very identical to <clears throat> through alkyla mines uh, weak years followed by very strong uh, years of recovery and uh, more than 30 percent uh, yearly returns clearly outpacing uh the minus 30 percent uh, or more uh, years of negative returns and similarly for garware and suprajit also so this again gives us a confidence that uh, uh, these companies have seen years of slowdown in earnings but uh, they have come back very very sharply uh, in subsequent years and uh, we are very much confident that this time also it is not different uh, we have seen last 12 months of uh, moderation in earnings uh, uh, drawdown in share prices which has obviously been more than the drawdown in the earnings uh, but uh, we should see a, a very strong comeback in the earnings as well as the return for the portfolio companies our conviction comes again just to repeat from two things one is that these companies are not catering to deep cyclical industries uh, these are catering to resilient end user industries where the demand uh, should not be weak for a prolonged period of time and secondly structurally these companies have not seen any issue in fact we as i discussed uh, for most of the portfolio companies there are some exceptions most of the portfolio companies these companies are structurally much better than what they were pre-covid what they were five to six years back uh, so we remain very confident of the portfolio companies. Um, so one is RHA Magnesita. I think we discussed this last time. Uh, the key reason for buying RHA Magnesita is uh, uh, we think that the demand uh, of refractory is fairly stable. So even though it supplies to steel industry, which is one of the most uh, volatile industry. But uh, if you look steel industry's volatility primarily comes not from the volumes or the production volumes. It primarily comes from the prices because it is dictated by global trends, etc. Whereas when you look at Tata Steel production or uh, Jindal production, etc., it's fairly stable. They grow at a fairly stable production volumes year on year. Uh, so fortunately, refractories is not impacted by the steel prices. Rather, it is uh, impacted by the production volumes. So in a way, it's a fairly stable industry. We don't see demand uh, uh, cyclical uh, as in the case of steel industry. Uh, so that is one. Uh, secondly, refractories are very important uh, uh, components to the steel uh, uh, production. Even though they account for only a fraction of the overall steel production cost, but in terms of impact, if you have a low, low quality uh, refractories, it can be quite damaging. You have to actually stop the production for a uh, few days, which means millions and millions of dollars of uh, production losses. So hence for saving a bit, uh, some uh, uh, penny, you wouldn't risk basically uh, buying low quality refractories. So again, uh, as a result, the industry is quite oligopoly in nature. Uh, customers have been very, very less experiment in terms of or going for low cost uh, alternatives. Uh, secondly, company specific, why we like uh, RHI is because of the parentage it has. So RHI's parentage, uh, uh, which is a Dutch company, has a lot of uh, focus on the refractories. In fact, uh, their forte is refractories. They have not diversified into many things. Uh, they have kept their focus on the refractories. Uh, R&D spend at the parent level is uh, quite significant. Almost 4 to 5% of uh, their revenues is spent on R&D. And it's also validated by the patents, number of patents that the parents uh, parent owns. Uh, so that has actually flowed down to India as well. And one good thing is that unlike uh, typical MNCs where there are a lot of uh, entities in India, uh, in case of RHI, uh, the parent has only one listed company uh, in India, which is RHI, which we have invested in. Uh, earlier, they used to have uh, a lot of entities in India, but uh, fortunately, around three, four years back, they consolidated everything in India, in RHI, Magnesitia, India. So that also actually adds to the comfort that what your parent is doing, R&D it is doing, what your uh, research it is doing, uh, the benefit of that is flowing only to RHI, Magnesita. 
Uh, and its apparent focus is also validated by the kind of M&A that they have done in India in the last uh, few years. Uh, over the course of last three, uh, four years, they have made three, four acquisitions uh, like Dalmia, uh, high-tech acquisition, which they have done. Uh, that also actually uh, gives us conviction about the parents' focus in India. Uh, so RHA Magnesita, we bought uh, uh, recently in the month of July. Uh, second stock which we added was Rainbow Children's uh, Medicare. Again, we like, uh, again, it's a uh, very uh, pediatrician and uh, uh, gynec focused businesses, not dabbling into multi uh, specialty. Uh, and uh, we find here a very strong competitive advantage. Uh, so, in case of Hyderabad, they started with Hyderabad. Obviously, they benefited initially from the goodwill of uh, the uh, main promoter, Mr. Ramesh Kancharla, has got a very strong uh, name in the doctor uh, community. But over time, uh, uh, they have been able to solve the chicken and egg problem. So they did very well in Hyderabad. They attracted very good volumes. And uh, when you have high volumes, it also becomes an attraction for the doctors because uh, doctors, um, beyond your fixed salary, they are also able to generate uh, extra income from high volumes, uh, high cases. And high volume, besides the monetary benefit, it also gives us a lot of learning. Uh, ground for the doctors. You have complicated cases, etc. Uh, so it has become a very strong flywheel. So uh, uh, you have high volumes, it attracts very good doctors. And because you get very good doctors, uh, you actually, it also helps volumes. So Rainbow has uh, created a very strong flywheel. Uh, high volumes also benefits it in terms of uh, pediatrics. India has a very limited, basically government gives very limited seats. And because uh, Rainbow has uh, high volumes of uh, uh, pediatric uh, cases, it also benefits from uh, having uh, the uh, government approved uh, fellowship for DNB pediatrics. Uh, uh, so again, it creates a very strong ta talent pipeline for the future pediatrician because you are trained in a uh, culture of rainbow and uh, once you uh, basically qualify uh, you already have a, a hospital which is a kind of leader in this field and you actually invariably join rainbow so this kind of also has created a strong pipeline for uh, uh, radio uh, for uh, rainbow and lastly uh, beyond hyderabad uh, uh, rainbow has made a conscious uh, effort to go beyond Hyderabad. Uh, so it started with first getting into the adjoining uh, uh, places within Telangana and uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh. And over time, it has also found very good success in Bangalore. Uh, for example, in the recently uh, reported quarterly result, uh, they are making almost 28% EBITDA margin in Bangalore. Uh, Hyderabad, they make something like 35 to 40%. So even in newer territory, they have been able to replicate, uh, replicate this success. Uh, so uh, geographic expansion should help uh, in the earnings growth in the coming uh, years. Plus, uh, they also, beyond pediatrician, they are also focusing on gynec. Uh, so earlier they used to do only uh, high-risk pregnancies, but now they're also getting into regular deliveries. Again, uh, that also actually helps you create a steady, uh, because if the child is delivered in a particular hospital, uh, more often than not, you will actually get uh, consult the pediatrician operating within that hospital. So that has also created a very good uh, pipeline for the uh, patients. Uh, so, uh, uh, so we are very confident about uh, uh, Rainbow Children Medicare and it has found a place in our portfolio. And the two most recent entrants have been PDS. So PDS is a very unique uh, business model. Uh, so uh, uh, basically it services uh, the likes of uh, the Western retailers like Haynes, uh, like um, Salesbury, etc., who are looking for a low cost uh, sourcing opportunities. Uh, so PDS uh, basically, uh, it doesn't uh, manufacture on its own or rather it has very limited manufacturing on its own, but it access a connect between the Western retailers and the backend. And uh, whereas its customers are primarily UK, Europe, and to some extent USA, its main uh, supply chain is based out of uh, Bangladesh uh, and to smaller extent in India and some other countries. Uh, so basically it accepts a connect between the Western retailers and this uh, supply chain and offers very strong uh, value proposition to both these uh, both these ends for the western customers uh, uh, because uh, uh, for example uh, zara etc which are very fashion oriented they may have their own design team etc but uh, for value retailers 
uh, designing something which is very costly for them to do on a very low volumes. So here PDS actually comes into play because PDS has been in industry for a long period of time. They are their own in-house designing team. Uh, so uh, PDS, uh, these companies consult with PDS in terms of uh, designing, etc. And they have very, got a very strong repository in place. Secondly, uh, these Western retailers wouldn't, uh, while they want to avail low-cost manufacturing advantage, but they don't want to uh, uh, face the hassle of compliance sector where actually PDS manages the shows for them show for them uh, so very strong uh, uh, business model uh, giving very strong value proposition to the retailer on the one hand and in terms of uh, supply chain uh, they have close to 600 factories uh, primarily in Bangladesh again uh, for the uh, factories what PDS uh, brings on the table is basically assured volumes because uh, these um, factories are too small to approach the western world retailers uh, PDS actually helps them fill their volumes plus PDS because of its balance sheet strength because of its size is also able to avail working capital for these uh, factories so again uh, very strong value proposition to the back end as well uh, and also what PDS has done very uniquely is that uh, uh, to uh, it takes on board the uh, the employees who have been with these retailers for a long period of time who have now retired. So they take uh, these, uh, uh, these consultants on board. They give them stake in the subsidiaries around 10 to 20%. And then that consultants actually, because these consultants were asked while employed by the likes of Zara, Haynes, Salesbury, they know the system and uh, they become the front end. Uh, at the same time, they have equity participation in these subsidiaries. And hence, uh, compared to a regular salary drawn, they are able to uh, have a skin in the game. They are able to earn much more uh, being associated with uh, PDS. Uh, so uh, uh, PDS has uh, found a way in the Marcellus portfolio. We are very, very confident. Uh, the global trend is uh, also quite favorable. Uh, we are seeing more and more retailers now uh, taking this route uh, where they have agent like PDS in between uh, because they want to focus more on uh, front end. They want to focus more on uh, uh, their marketing. They want to leave behind this back end manufacturing design part to a uh, uh, more trusted uh, uh, agent like PDS. So we are seeing many new uh, deal wins for PDS in the recent uh, years. And we think that that we should continue, continue, continue for a while. And uh, uh, another stock which we had recently is Sarah Sanitary Wear. Uh, this is actually, I think some of you may be surprised that this is a very well-known stock. Uh, but we are very confident that Sarah should be able to deliver around that 20% earnings growth uh, for the uh, next uh, foreseeable uh, future. Uh, one thing uh, uh, from the demand side, it's uh, very, very robust. We have seen very strong real estate uh, demand in the last uh, two to three years. And faucets and sanitary wear is something which comes at the fag end of uh, house building. And given the kind of registrations, uh, 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 the announcements by the real estate companies uh, uh, in the last two to three years, we think that next two to three years should be pretty good for players like uh, Sarah. And the second thing uh, which we like about Sarah is uh, very much focus on uh, maintaining operating efficiency. Uh, for example, they have been able to really bring down their work working capital significantly over the course of the last three to four years, which has added significantly to their free cash flow generation ability, uh, plus uh, uh, kind of a product innovation, product introductions that we have seen, plus a distribution is a very strong mode in this business. Uh, so you need to have a very strong uh, reach. Uh, and uh, just to give you an example, Kajari again has a very strong brand in the uh, home building, but uh, it's not been able to succeed in the sanitary wear and faucets. Uh, again, that kind of highlights the importance of having distribution uh, network in this uh, in this field. Uh, and also from a competitive perspective, we are seeing Sarah gaining market share. Uh, so on one hand, Hindware seems to be a sign of struggling in the last few years. Uh, Hurstweil, a very strong brand uh, in the sanitary wear. And also we are not seeing Roka. While Periware was a very strong brand, but after its takeover by Roka, Italian-based company, we are seeing again uh, the kind of struggling, which has actually helped Sarah gain market share in the sanitary wear uh, space, which we think should continue for a while. Uh, so while there are a lot of institutional holdings already in Sera, but we are very confident that the earnings should be able, able to compound around 18 to 20% mark and the free cash flow a notch higher. Uh, so these were the uh, four stocks which we had recently. 
Uh, I think I'll just stop here and I think we can get into uh, questions now.